which skills are necessary for hostage negotiations? Uh, well, there's lots. Um, I would say that patience, uh, the ability to demonstrate empathy, but it's not just the ability to demonstrate empathy, it's to demonstrate empathy quite often with people you don't warm to, you know, i.e. kidnappers, uh, and people that don't necessarily warm to you, particularly if you're the person in the way of them getting what they want and what they're asking for. So it's that ability, which is an added ability and skill, if you like, than just demonstrating empathy. Mm. Uh, also managing the stress of others. Quite often incidents that negotiators get called to, they are incredibly stressed and they're often stressed because their basic needs are lacking. Like they've got no sense of control, certainty and safety. So we have to identify what needs they need uh, what basic needs are lacking and, and give them back with certain words that we use. Mm -hmm. And we also have to manage our own emotions, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to manage your own stress and identify what emotions that we're going through to address them before we can actually deal with other people. And what is the role of a hostage negotiator? Well, ultimately to save lives, mm -hmm. uh, be it hostages who have been held by kidnappers, or people who have suicide um, ideation and you, you're called you know, to people that, that are threatening to jump off buildings, et cetera. So it ultimately it is to save lives. Mm. Um, but it's also getting to the point where you can influence and persuade people to do things that they initially didn't want to do. So be it to reduce their demands if they're kidnappers, come down off that building if they climbed up on top of a building the suicide ideations um, so all manner of uh, ways that we have to persuade and influence people to change their minds uh, often to change their minds so it, it make them safer what was the biggest crisis you faced with the metropolitan police and how did you manage the situation well you probably expect me to say something like firearms incidents or <laughs> you know, life and death, uh, public order incidents. But actually the biggest crisis when I, when I heard that question is, is, an, is, is a personal crisis. Mm. So I was deployed to Iraq and it was my very first deployment representing the um, British embassy that was over there and the Foreign Commonwealth Office. And I had a crisis of confidence. And I remember walking to my very first meeting to meet the ambassador, the UK ambassador. I had a blue folder underneath my arm. Uh, mortars were coming in, being fired into the British Embassy grounds. And I thought, and I stopped, and I thought to myself, can I actually do this? Have I got the ability to go into this meeting and offer advice and set a strategy and talk about my role, you know, with confidence? Uh, and the answer at that point was immediately, I don't think I can. But then I fell back onto two things. And, and they were, would somebody send me into that role, into that position, if they didn't believe that I could do it? And secondly, I mean, at that point, I must have had about 20 years in the police, uh, and I was quite senior. And that surely, that experience must be transferable into any meeting you go into. And if you didn't really know what you were talking about, then at least you could convince people that you did, but also that you could use everyone else in the room and use their skill set to assist you in that meeting. Mm. So I hung on, if you like, to those two thoughts. 